Thank you very much indeed, Peter, for your ministry and song tonight. Well, I want you to turn to three scriptures with me this evening. The first one is Luke's Gospel 15. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 15 tonight. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, down at verse number 11. And the Lord Jesus is speaking, and he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the young, younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. But when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a, cit to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. And I want you to come over now to John's Gospel, chapter number 4. John's Gospel, please, chapter Number four, <clears throat> John 4, verse 7, John's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 7, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into that city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from whence then hast thou that living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself, and his children and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him, shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou said five husbands. And he whom thou hast is not thy husband, and that saidst thou truly. Look at verse 28. And the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, And come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? 
Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In verse 39, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him, for the saying of the woman which testified, He told me all things that ever I did. And then one final reading, please. We'll find this now in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 23. In the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament, chapter 23. Just one verse, chapter 23, and it's verse 26. My son, Proverbs 23, verse 26, My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. And we know that the Lord will bless those three readings to our hearts this evening. There are two words this evening I'm sure you've caught on already that connects each of these three Scripture readings tonight. The first time they're quoted is in Luke's Gospel, chapter, chapter number 15, and in verse number 12. They're quoted again in John's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 15, and they're quoted in Proverbs, chapter 23, and verse 26. They're quoted this evening by three di very different people, but they all mean the very same thing. Those two words this evening are, give me. Luke 15, verse 12, give me. Give me the portion of goods that befalleth me. John chapter 5, verse Verse, chapter 4, verse 15. Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. In Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. My son, give me thine heart. The two words this evening are, give me. You know, friend, when someone comes to you to say, give me, that means, that means the person that you're asking has the power to give what you want. And the other side of the coin is you don't have what they can give. You know, it's good to see the boys and girls here tonight. Thank you, boys and girls, for coming now. And it's lovely to see you, and I'm glad you're, you're here tonight. And you know what it's like, boys and girls. You go to Daddy, you see a packet of sweets in the shops, and it's always Daddy, it's never Mummy. And you go to Daddy, and you'll say, Daddy, give me pocket money. And the reason why, boys and girls, you say, Daddy, give me pocket money, because your Daddy has the power to give you that money. And you don't have it, and that's why you're asking. And then it's the same with the ladies. Mind, the ladies are very quick at the give me too. And they go to the husband and say, I'm thinking of going down to Marks and Spencers for the day. Is there any chance you could give me a wee loan? And there's times we have to give the wee loan or, or just say what I say. I'm sorry, darling, but I'm broke today. But you're, <laughs> Oh, that's it. You should try that, Peter. I'm broke. It's good. It works. It does work. And it's because this evening <laughs> we have the power to give. But you know, the person who asks, give me, they want something that they, that they don't have. That they don't have. And I want to preach this evening. God has given me this message. On the lads give me. Because in Luke 15, we have a young lad here. And I want to talk about his give me. The give me that was squandered. I want you to get that tonight. The give me that was squandered. And then in John's Gospel, chapter 4, I want to talk about the ladies give me. Give me this water that I may never thirst again. And I want to say, preaching her tonight, the ladies give me that was shared. That was shared. And then we've got the Lord's give me tonight. The Lord's give me that saves. My son, give me thine heart. In Luke's gospel, chapter number 15 tonight, we have a lad this evening. A lad who goes to his father and he says to his father, Father, give me tonight, give me the portions of goods that befalleth me. And here's a young lad tonight 
who believes that the faraway fields are green. They, he feels that it's better to get away from home. It's better to get away out of the house. There's a better life to live. You know what it's like when you're young. You know you're only young once and you want to make the most of it and you want to go out and you want to live life to the full. And here he is and he's going out. And he's going out. He goes to his father and he says, Father, give me, give me the portion of goods that befalleth me. And he leaves home. He leaves home, and I want you to notice how he leaves home. He leaves home with his pockets full and his head empty. The pockets are full, but the head is empty. And here's a young fella leaving home, and he says, Look at what I have, boys. I have it made. I have, I have all that I want, and I have more. I have more that I need. You know, friends, I want you to notice that he leaves full. Will you mark that tonight? He leaves full. You know what this young lad doesn't realize tonight? He doesn't realize what the Lord Jesus talks about. He said to me, George, what do you mean that the Lord Jesus talks about? Well, you read Luke 15 at Luke 12 and verse 15. The Lord Jesus says, A man's life consisteth not of the abundance of the things that he possesses. People think as long as you've got loads of money, and as long as you have this, and as long as you have that, and as long as you have the other thing, that's life. That's life. But you know, friend, tonight, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Money, possessions, and wealth can do nothing for the soul. Money, possessions, and wealth has wrecked and ruined more lives. More lives. There was an article in the newspaper one day. I was happening to lift, lift one and happened to be reading it. And with one of these lads, one of these men who won the lottery, won the lottery, I don't know how many million, 50 some odd million, bought this, bought that. You know what he bought? He bought a helicopter. He bought a helicopter, built a heliport, got the helicopter landed, and the helicopter is still sitting there for he's nobody to fly it. Nobody to fly it. Oh, full pockets, empty head. I'll tell you, friends, riches and money doesn't give you sense. And this young lad leaves full. He leaves full. You know, there's things that money can't buy. Money can't buy your health tonight. Riches can't buy you salvation tonight. And riches, riches, friend, are not everything they, they make out to be. I want you to notice he leaves full. But then I want you to notice he lives foolishly. He lives foolishly. He wasted his substance in riotous living. He squanders his give me. You see, so many people are like this lad tonight. They live for the here and now. They live for the here and now. They say, you know, well, so what's the point in having all this? I could be dead tomorrow. I could be dead next week. Live now. Let's be happy now. But you know, friends, he blows it. He blows his give me. He wastes his give me. And he squanders it, squanders it. You know, friend, I remember, remember when I was working in Plumright, this man came in, he was a traveler, and it was the whole time, the whole lottery was going on. He says, George, do you do the lottery? He says, no, I don't do the lottery. He says, why do you not do the lottery? He says, because I don't want to do it. He says, like, it's only a pound a go and you could win a million pounds. He says, what on earth would I do a million pounds? So what could I do a million pounds? He says, I have something far better than having money. And I, and I just quoted John Mark 8, verse 36. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? No, friend, I'll never forget the day. Never forget the day. I walked through Elvis Presley's Graceland Mansion. And I seen it, it sitting the way it was the day he died. Gold discs, this is here, all the riches, all the trophies, all the gold discs. And you want to know something? He's gone, and he never took one thing with him. Not one thing. But this young lad, he, he left full, he lived foolishly, but he learns fast. He learned fast. I'll tell you what he learned. 
He learned that no man gave unto him. I'll tell you, you'll have friends when you have money. You'll have friends with your money. You don't really call them friends. You call them spongers. You call them spongers. Oh, they're all there when, you, when you've got the money. As long as you're firing money all around you, they're like, they're like moths around a lake. But the day you run out of money is the day you run out of friends. And this young man squandered all he had, and no man gave unto him. You know, friend, that's the, the lads gave me. That was squandered. But then I want you to notice the ladies give me that you shared. Because it says here, sir, in John 4, give me this water that I thirst not. Give me this water that, she, that, that, I, that I thirst not. You know, she wanted something that she didn't have. But she wanted the Lord Jesus to give her this because she realized he was the only one that could give her. First of all, you know, in verse number John's gospel here, chapter 4, we read these words that the Lord Jesus explained unto her as to what she can give. John 4 and verse, verse 13. And Jesus said, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. You know, there's many friends like drinking from the world's well. Drinking from the lifeless water. They're drinking the lifeless water of riotous living, rebellious living. They think life tonight is in drink. They think life is in drugs. And wait till I tell you, you say to me, why do people drink? Why do people get drunk? Why do people take drugs? You know why? Because they're thirsting and they're searching for life. From 16 years of age to 20 years of age to the day I got saved, I was the very same way. Well, I wasn't into drugs. But I went out in disco and I used to drink and all the rest of it and come home perhaps airlocked on a Friday night. And friend, I thought this was the life. Oh, this is the life. And the last you'd work the next day, Saturday morning, well, George, had you a good night last night? Oh, it was brilliant. Some nights crack. Where were you? You know what I can hardly remember? I can hardly remember. And you know, people searching for life. And they're drinking from the, the riotous well of riotous living. And friend, tonight, listen. And you know, they're trying to kill their thirst. And young people are killing themselves. Trying to kill their thirst. Get that right. Young people are killing themselves by trying to kill the thirst in their heart. How many drug deaths has happened this week? Young people wrecked in drugs, killed by drugs. But you know, friend, I have sympathy for them tonight. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus, you should have sympathy too. Because these young people who are injecting themselves, taking tablets, they're searching for what really satisfies, but it's not getting it. They're killing themselves. You know, because they don't know. And you know, friend, when you're out in the world, I can tell you there's something you learn quick. It doesn't last. There's bound to be something more. This woman said, give me this water that I thirst not again. And you know, friend, this is the, the ladies give me tonight. She wanted the real thing. She wanted the, what, something that the Lord Jesus could only give. She's tried the lifeless water. She wants the, no longer the lifeless water. She wants the living water tonight. She wants the living water. The Lord Jesus says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into, into everlasting life. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water. You see, the Lord Jesus can give you what satisfies. He gives what satisfies. I tried the broken cisterns, Lord. And all the waters fail. And even as I stoop to drink, they mock me as I will. There's none but Christ can satisfy. I can tell you that tonight. There's none but Christ can satisfy. There's none other name for me. There's love and there's life and there's lasting joy. Lord Jesus, not in religion. Lord Jesus found in me. You know what I love about this woman? She got it. She got what she wanted. But I'll tell you something what she did. She shared it. She went into the city and she brings out all the men. Come and see a man that told me all things that ever I did. And she brings the whole city out. Save two minutes. Save two minutes. And she brings the whole city out. She brings the whole city out to the Lord Jesus. Save two minutes.
two minutes saved, and she's out, and she brings all the men in the city out to meet the Lord Jesus. What an evangelist. What an evangelist. And she brings the whole, the whole town out, and it says in verse 39, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. On him. It doesn't say in him. On him. And friend, I'll tell you, saved, saved an hour. And there's many of the men that believes on him. Many of them. And that was the ladies give me that was shared. I say, brother, in the Lord, if you're a Christian here, and sister, you too, when was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? When was the last told, time you told someone there's true satisfaction and lasting joy in him? There's some of us saved for years and we haven't opened our mouth. But you know, friend, here's the ladies give me. Oh, they give me that was shared. And friend, she got it, but she didn't keep it. She shared it. And then there's the Lord's give me. The Lord's give me that saves. Proverbs 23, verse 26. My son, give me, give me thy heart. Give me thine heart. You know, that's something the Lord wants tonight, that he doesn't have. That's your heart. The Lord doesn't want your money. And the Lord doesn't want your, your religion. And the Lord doesn't want anything. Of, he wants your heart. He wants your heart tonight. Because if he has your heart, he has you all. He has you all. And friend, tonight when I think of that, my son, give me thine heart. Friend, when I take a look at my heart, how sinful it is, how wicked it was, and how filthy it was. Why, Lord, would you want my heart for? But you know, he loved me. He loved me. And tonight you have your heart, and the Lord wants your heart tonight. And the Lord says to you, listen, give me your heart tonight. Give me thine heart, because look what I have given you. I give you my son. I want your heart, because I give my son to suffer and to bleed and to die on an old rugged cross to save your soul. I don't want your money, the Lord saying tonight. I don't want this. I want your heart. That's what he said. Give me, give me thine heart. Because on the cross at Calvary, we can see what the Lord gave. For God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten Son. Do you know, I hope I'm never faced with this, but if my wee lad, Nathan, well, he's no wee lad anymore, and he takes something in his heart, and the doctor says, George, there's nothing we can do, but the only person in this world has a heart that matches yours. Do you want to know something? Do you want to know something? I be willing to give my life and to give my heart in order that he would live. I would. I would. But if some of you, if some of you were dying tonight, and my son, my son, had the heart that would match you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I wouldn't give him up for any of you. I'm sorry. But the Lord gave his son to suffer and to bleed and to die on that old rugged blood-stained cross. And the Lord is saying to you tonight, listen, I've given you my son, now you give me your heart. Tonight, if you're not saved in this meeting, he wants your heart tonight. He wants your all tonight. He wants you to repent tonight. He wants you to trust him tonight. He wants you to come to him tonight. He wants you to come. Have you any room for Jesus? He who bore your load of sin, as he knocks and seeks admission, sinner, will you let him in? Will you? Will you let him in tonight? Room for business. 
Aye, room for pleasure. But for Christ the crucified, there's not a place that he can enter in that heart for which he died. Give me, give me, give me thine heart. I'll change it. I'll save it. And I'll give it eternal life. Give me thine heart. Let's bear in a wee word of prayer together, please. Lord, tonight, as we turn our closing moments of this meeting, Lord, there is the cry of the human heart tonight that always wants more. I pray, Lord, tonight that the cry of the human heart will be this evening to want you. And Lord, this evening, because you love them and you gave your Son for them. And Lord, tonight, we thank you that you love us. And you gave your all. You gave your everything so that we could be saved from our sins and could have life, life more abundant in Jesus. And Lord, tonight, if there's any in our meeting that's not saved, who has never had the joy of sins forgiven, that, Lord, this night, this night they'll cry out, Lord, sir, give me this water. Give me this salvation. Give me this eternal life. Give me this hope. And that they'll realize, Lord, tonight, that you're the only one that can give. And you're the only one that can save. Oh, Lord, tonight we just leave the eternal issues of this meeting with Thee. And Lord, as we separate now tonight, and as we make our journey homeward tonight, Lord, I pray that the weight of sin and guilt and conviction will be borne, Lord, this evening by sinners. So much so, Lord, they not go to bed tonight. They not leave this tabernacle tonight until they bow the knee and say, Lord, I give you my heart. And so, Lord, we just leave the eternal issues of this very service to Thee. And praying, Lord, that Thou will continue to speak. Yes, continue to stray. And part us now, Lord, in Thy fear. Yes, in Thy fear. Yes, Lord, and with Thy blessing. And take us to our homes in safety. It's in our Savior's name we pray. Amen. Now, if anybody wants to speak to me, please do so at the door. Thank you.